All right, I'm JJ Stankovitz here in beautiful Palm Beach, Florida with Colts head coach Frank Reich. And Frank, the, a big topic today as we sit here on Monday was Matt Ryan and the acquisition of a new quarterback here in Indianapolis. You talked a lot about what, what made you excited about Matt Ryan, getting him uh, in the building, not only the person he is, but the schematic fit he is. Your overall impression of just, let's talk about the person that Matt Ryan is first, the leader he is, the kind of human he is that you're adding to the building. Yeah, just like the kind of player that we're looking for. Great football character, right? Toughness, tenacious toughness, like love to play football, love to practice. Here's a guy, 14 year career, missed very few snaps. Mm -hmm. This guy loves to play, he loves to practice. Um, you know, secondly, he's just been a model of consistency over those years. And then he's also shown you know, that he has what it takes, that kind of person who the moment's never too big. You know, he can he can be at his best in the biggest moments. In those big moments, you know, he's, I believe, sixth all-time in game-winning drives. That's something you mentioned earlier today. That that ability to, to come up with those plays when your team needs it the most, to just kind of go get a bucket, if you will, that's something that to have that in a quarterback has got to make your life a little bit easier as a head coach when you get in those those big situations. There's no doubt. You want to try to when you get in those situations, you're you're typically you're going to go to your go-to stuff, mm -hmm. and when you go to your go-to stuff, you, the plays, your pass concepts, the run, whatever it is, the play action stuff, the just the drop back stuff, and you, you just you need that quarterback to to direct the ship, and then somewhere along there, you got to make a big time play. Um, that's what you see year in and year out. That's what this guy's done. That's what Matt has done his whole career. You mentioned the, the games that he's missed, only three of them in his entire career. And he's someone who, who talked to us about, you know, the, the dedication he has to taking care of his body, to sleep, to recovery, to all these things. For him to play 14 years and to have that track record, how does that benefit him as you now look at the kind of quarterback he is as he enters his late 30s? Yeah, I mean, that even though he's played that much football because of the care that he's taken of himself. You don't, you don't see any diminishing physical skills. I mean, that just shows up on the tape. You know, even, I mean, right, Matt's not a guy who scrambles around a lot, but even when he does, you can see he can still move. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not just stationary in the pocket. He, right. can, he can extend plays, eyes down the field, and make big plays. I wanted to ask you about that, too, because something I noticed when I watched some of his tape was that, he, yeah, he may not be the most mobile quarterback, like you think of a mobile quarterback, but he can move in the pocket. And it's something that, I, you know, I remember talking to DeForest Buckner about Tom Brady in, in kind of a similar vein in that, you know, he's not going to take off and run all the time, but he knows how to move in the pocket and he knows how to avoid pressure. Is that something you see with him as well? Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and as you said, J.J., there are those kind of movements. There's, there's a little shuffle here, shuffle there, or, hey, step up in the pocket, move to the right, step up in the pocket, move to the left. And then occasionally, you know, he still does have that little bit yeah. in him. You know, he's not looking to run or he's not looking to, you know, make that kind of a play. But there, there's still some juice left in those mm -hmm. legs. It, as you've got to know him and just the, the conversations you had with him, whether it was on that Zoom, just having him come into the building, having his son give you the biggest high five I've ever seen <laughs> anyone give, just the, the kind of personality and the, the willingness to learn that he has, how does that kind of mesh with your philosophy and Marcus Brady's philosophy on this coaching staff? Yeah, I mean, it's tremendous because, you know, we're so collaborative. You know, we're so collaborative. You know, we, we definitely have a set offense that we want to run with ideas and schemes and how we've envisioned it to be. But we always leave room to adapt to the players uh, that we have and particularly the quarterback we have. So to get a guy like Matt in, in the room and talk it through and hash it out, to find the tweaks, the points of emphasis that we want to have is a big deal. What, what are you excited to learn from him, you know, from his experience over, you know, a decade and a half in the NFL? Yeah, uh, one of the things is, you know, what are his go-to plays? You know, like when it, all those game-winning drives, you know, yep. to go back and watch some of those with him, you know, go watch all those game-winning drives. Tell me what you were thinking. Tell me about these plays um, so that when we get in those same moments, right, it would be foolish of me to, you know, we might dial a few new things up, but, you know, we might – it might be a little mix of both, you know, they'll take a little bit of the old with a little bit of the new. Just generally speaking, when, when you're bringing in a new quarterback, how, how much of the offense is similar to what, you know, every other team around the league runs? And then what's the percentage of the of stuff that's different, whether it's language, it's, you know, route depth, just certain little things like that? Yeah, the language can be pretty different. Um, but 
it's kind of all related, yeah. you know, it's kind of all related, uh, you know, and the way you call formations and stuff like that. And, and it's all systematized. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Matt, right, has been 14 years at one spot, but as he's told us, he's had three or four different coordinators. Right. So he's probably had exposure. And in fact, I know he's had some exposure to some things that we do. So mm -hmm. that makes for a quick translation transition where you can translate that stuff in your mind and put it into categories and then uh, you, you learn it that much quicker. So what does the, the OTA process look like then when you get him and you can actually get on the grass with a ball with him in a couple of weeks, months, I guess? Yeah, I mean, in phase one, right, the coaches can't be out in the field. So the first two weeks, it's just meeting time with them. Mm -hmm. And that, that's very valuable time. You know, we'll have a couple of weeks of just meeting time. But then during that meeting time, hey, he'll be out in the field with the players mm -hmm. and directed by himself. Um, throwing, not overdoing it, but just kind of getting initial work with those guys. And then we'll have a couple of weeks of that. Then we'll get into phase two. Now the coaches can get out there. We can watch it and everything will be on film. Again, talking it all through is very valuable. So let's, let's move on to another piece of news that happened today. John Fox being brought on as a senior defensive assistant, a guy with 40 years of coaching experience, coached a number of top defenses in the NFL. Just what are, what are you and Gus looking forward to what John can bring into the building? Yeah, just his experience. Um, you know, hey, Gus hire Gus to bring the system that he's run and kind of perfected and excited about that. But as we've talked about it, you, you, you're always trying to stay one step ahead, you know, and, you know, John Fox has just done that. He's done it at a high level for a long time. And so, and it's been differently than what Gus has done. So, you know, this will be, you know, John not coming in and teaching us his defense. This is, hey, you come in and learn Gus's defense and, and, and do what we do. But now, hey, let's use that vast experience that you have for a few tweaks here or an idea there. Is, is part of staying one step ahead sometimes being able to pull from stuff in the past? You know, with, with John Fox, some of the defenses that he kind of helped pioneer back in the 90s with the New York Giants, to be able to kind of pull from some of that information to now apply to now, is that something that, can happen there yeah there's no doubt you want to pull on that kind of experience and particular in particular you want to pull on the kind of experience hey we're in the AFC everyone's talking about it all these mm -hmm. great quarterbacks right. are in the AFC so you know he's gone up against a lot of great quarterbacks in his time that's that's a big part of this mm -hmm. you know what I mean that's a big part of this so kind of just adding that element of experience so that on defense you know we got you know, we got Gus Bradley, right? He's he's the cornerstone. He's the coordinator, and we got Richard Smith, who's been around the block a few times. You know, he's he's play, he's seen coached a lot of football. Uh, Ron Miles in the secondary. A lot of, now you get John Fox, and you know, for us to go where we want to go and be the team, I really want us. I, I believe that we have the personnel on defense. You know, we're we're right at that top ten deal. You know, just to continue to ascend as a defense can be a can be a big thing for us. And the, another big personnel addition on that side of the ball, Yannick Ngakwe coming in from the Las Vegas Raiders. What what stands out about Yannick on tape and the kind of player that he is? Just It's just proven production, you know, both with sacks but with hurries and affect the quarterback, affect the quarterback. Um, you know, he's been a playmaker. That's been proven. Um, you know, he's hard to block. He's got that combination of speed and bend around the edge. Um, an experienced, savvy player. You know, you talk to them, and I always love this. It's no, never a surprise, but you talk to these good players, and you, it takes about one minute to figure out, oh, this guy's really smart. Uh -huh. Like, it's not just physical talent. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to think about it. So I think that's what we're getting. Kind of nice to not have to game plan for him now this year. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because uh, as we have had to so many times, you know, him playing in our division, and then obviously last year and with the Vegas, uh, out in Vegas. Just a couple more for you here, Frank. You talked a little bit about Naheem Hines and wanting to get him more involved. As you kind of get this version of the 2022 offense, where do you see Naheem fitting in with the, the rest of the playmakers in this offense? Yeah, we do. I mean, and I think Matt's the kind of quarterback who will, who will want to get Naheem involved as well. You know, we don't want to force it. We don't have to force it, you know. Um, but it can be we're going to spread the ball around, but, you know, we can just make it a point to – um, you know, to continue to develop Naheem, you know, in every aspect that we can utilize him, you know, as a runner, um, you know, when we use him out there in the slot as a receiver some and do some of the different things we do. Um, some of the time he and Jonathan are on the field together, mm -hmm. that always seems to give teams a little bit of an issue. Um, so we'll continue to look at ways that we can utilize him and complement the other players on offense. With Michael Pittman Jr., how does his mentality, that physical, tough, you know, go up and get it mentality, how does that benefit Matt Ryan stepping in now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big deal because, 
you know, this game is so hard, right? You're always looking for, you know, you get the one on one, but when you get a quarterback like Matt Ryan, who is that accurate, that even when Pitt's covered, he's not covered. You know, I, I, that, I got confidence to throw it up to him. I see the little window where I can get it. Yeah, the defender's all over him, but hey, there's that little window right here. I can put the ball where I want. I have confidence that my guy can come down with it. All right, that's Frank Reich, head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Thanks for joining us here, and uh, go enjoy some warm weather. Thanks, JJ.